Hello and welcome to BF5. It's a game where crazy stuff like that happens and you can do stuff like this again. Yep, finally we've got shoulder mounted rocket launchers in the game again and this kind of only in battlefield thing is possible or how about you're in the bottom gun of an airplane, you jump out and then you land on top of a bridge and that is your new advantageous firing position and you can just rain down hell with your squad mates on the enemy below. I wasn't too sure how to do this video because I went to an event last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and I played BF5, the full version of the game, for around 10 hours in total. And of course I was allowed to record it all and that's what you're seeing here. So I've cut together some of the, the best bits, the highlights, some interesting things that I thought you guys would want to see. And I wanted to do this like a completely live commentary, obviously I've got some mental notes in my head but usually I'll write a script for this type of stuff but I wanted it to be as natural as possible because I've just got a, a lot of stuff to say about this game. Now, the build of the game we were playing was not the day one version. So there is going to be a patch that goes live on day one when the game's out. And I think that should be this Friday where um, the game will be updated, certain things will be changed. So this is an older build of the game. And there were quite a few bugs in it. I have to be honest with you guys, there are a few bugs. Um, I don't know if they'll be fixed in the day one patch. We shall see. But here are the throwing knives yes they are in multiplayer and i think you can only get these on the recon class and most of the time they're one hit kill if you get them in the head it just depends on the distance you know how far away you are from the, from the target but i had a ton of fun with these things i think this one is a, a triple kill first one as the uh enemy came running down and then boom in the face like that wasn't a headshot it did a lot of damage. I think it did 100 damage. I don't know why I threw one at Stod, but I did. And then the medic there going for the revive. <laughs> Kill number three. The dude runs in. Yep. Knife in the back. That one is going to sting. But in this video, I've got gameplay footage of all of the six other maps that we haven't seen before. So I haven't got any footage in here of Rotterdam or Narvik because we've played those so many times. So... You just seen footage here of the new maps. This one here is called Aras, and this is definitely going to be a fan favorite map in BF5. It looks incredible, and it played really well. It just felt like a nice battlefield map. As I'm going to town there with the 1-5. I think that was the Stone Gewehr 1-5. But this is Devastation, the destroyed version of Rotterdam plays completely different to Rotterdam though the actual map itself very infantry focused you do get tanks in it as well though but if you're a good assault player you can have a good time here this is Twisted Steel again another great map Twisted Steel thoroughly enjoyed it in Conquest it was brilliant I was just following this uh, V1 in here <laughs> god damn that looks good that looks so damn good and this is on Twisted Steel again, I think. Twisted Steel and Arras, definitely my two favourite maps. But, as I said, I do have footage of all the other maps in here. And I just wanted to kind of spitball and, and chat a bit about the game. The core gameplay, the gunplay, the movement. I love it. I'm a big fan of the attrition system as well. Although there is a caveat that I have to make to that point. Because it's not perfect. But for the most part, the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, the gunplay, it feels way more skill-based, way more tactical. Details like this are incredible. Just proning around in the rapeseed and it's bending over. If you in water like this, you can see the players wading around. It's, it's just chock full of detail. But the core minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, I'm, I'm a big fan. And I think this game has a higher skill floor, a higher skill ceiling than BF1. It goes back towards BF2, BF3 style, rewarding skill, 
rewarding team play and I think it's a great move for the franchise in terms of the core gameplay and um, it's addictive as soon as I'd gone home landed in the plane started driving home and I was just thinking about the game I was thinking damn I, I want to play that game again and uh, that's that's exciting to me because I didn't really get that as much with BF1 when it first came out but this game in terms of the gameplay is just a lot more rewarding for me. Now attrition, that caveat that I mentioned. In BF5 if you want to get health and ammo back there are a couple of ways of doing it. Obviously you don't also regen health to full now and ammo is a bit more limited than it has been in previous games. But one of the main ways that you can get ammo and health back when you're in the field and playing on the big maps is via supply stations and they're dotted around the maps usually at flags. You can see some on the minimap there, the big white boxes and you just go up, interact with them, get health, get ammo, whichever one you're next to. Now when the game comes out, the supply stations at the gimme flags closest to the deployments will already be built. But as for the rest of the map, they won't be built and it requires players to press T or whatever button it is on console, get their tool out and build that supply station. Now because they weren't there on the map and we're all kind of new to these other maps, you really started to feel the attrition system at certain points and you were like, hmm, this is quite annoying that I can't get any health and ammo back, I just want to play the game, it's a game, I want to have fun. And you would need players or require the players to go and build these things themselves throughout the levels. They can be destroyed and rebuilt, whatever. So the problem I think here is signaling. What I'd like to see is no matter if you've got your tool out or not, you can always see an outline of a supply station if it's not there or it's not been built. There is a little dot on the minimap if it's not been built and of course if you get your tool out you can see the outline of it but I don't think it's enough and they need to do more to incentivize people to build them and I think a really simple way of doing that is that if it isn't there just always have the outline transparent version of it available to see for all players so they can quickly go oh I need help I need ammo well I can help myself and my team by quickly just building this thing here. And then you're not going to really feel the attrition system as much. Yes, it would still be doing its purpose, but you'd have more options then to get health and ammo back. So just generally for the positives, I had a really fun time playing this over the weekend, last weekend. And there were just some crazy things that can happen in this game. And it feels like those only in Battlefield moments happen a lot more than they did in BF1. For example, you can stick dynamite to stuff now, as far as I remember, and you can also get stuff like sticky grenades. And you've got more interesting vehicles with a ton of customization and different weapon options. I love the fact that you can shoot grenades now too, so you can be more tactical with them. If you've got a frag grenade, it's got a timer on it. Well, okay, throw it down next to a door or a window where you know there's someone, and instead of waiting, that grenade to go off just shoot it surprise the enemy if an enemy is throwing a grenade at you shoot it boom it might kill them instead and you can throw back the grenades too and that's just one of the meta things in this game that you can do and it goes back to increasing the skill gap and overall when you put it all together the vehicle the air the infantry gameplay all of these little tricks and things you can do in the game to best your opponents it means that the good players are just going to be good and the best of the best the absolutely most skillful players are going to be head and shoulders above the rest and then you'll have this big bulk in the middle who are kind of average but at the end of the day all of that meta and all of that detail and the new things that you can do here just add to the whole experience and make it more satisfying so that's my thoughts on the general gameplay. It feels like a Battlefield game of old to me. It's almost a complete polar opposite to how BF1 plays and I think it's the right direction for the franchise. Now moving on to negatives because I do have a few things to say and areas I think that this game could improve. The obvious things like I mentioned the bugs. Yeah this is an older build of the game there will be a day one patch but a few bugs that I had were where I couldn't spawn on my squad mate or the squad leader called in a reinforcement tank like the Sturm Tiger or the Crocodile and it would spend the points but it didn't spawn the vehicle in or a bug where the whole server couldn't be revived and spectating your squad in the squad deploy screen just completely broke and the character kind of folded in half and looked like long neck man came back 
and one of the other glaring issues that I don't think they'll be able to fix is with the new revive system and the animations. Because they've got this new revive animation in the game, if you revive a teammate that's near a wall or a box or something, ultimately you're going to get times where their head clips and sticks into the box or your head goes into the box and you can see through the terrain for a bit. And I don't know if that's possible for them to fix because as far as I know, they would need proper physics-based server-side ragdolls to make that kind of thing happen. And I don't think they're quite there yet in a 64 multiplayer game. So you'll see a lot of clipping on the revive animations and it does kind of ruin the immersion a bit and take some of the polish off the game. So those are just a few of the bugs that I noticed and I hope they get fixed and there were still occasions, believe it or not, where I was having to vault multiple times over small pieces of scenery. It's just a legacy thing with the Frostbite engine and they can't seem to fix it. It still happens in this game. You're going to notice it and it's really annoying. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is very subjective and I don't think everyone will feel like this but I know that some people definitely will. And this goes all the way back to DICE at some point two or three years ago deciding we're going to make a new World War II game but we're going to tell the untold unseen stories and battles of World War II when the game launches. That's completely fair and that's their decision to launch a World War II game like this. And yes to their credit to be fair you're going to experience parts of World War II in video games that you haven't experienced before. You're going to go to places that are new, see things you haven't seen before. Yes, that's true. On the flip side, and I hope I can explain this succinctly and you guys can understand what I'm saying. I think for the core Battlefield audience, maybe people in their 20s or 30s who grew up with a lot of the Battlefield games and who played all of those World War II games in the 2000s, like the original COD game, like Medal of Honor Allied Assault, BF 1942 Brothers in Arms. The core Battlefield fanbase and audience who should make up the bulk of the fanbase and player base in BF5. The target audience who typically would buy a Battlefield game. These are the people who watched movies like Saving Private Ryan when they were growing up. Movies like Enemy at the Gates or TV series like Band of Brothers. And this might sound really stupid, but that idea of World War II that you have in your head from watching those movies and TV shows and playing those games, that's what you've grown to love. And if you're one of those people and those pieces of entertainment had a big impact on you, then that's the type of World War II game that you want to play. You want to play a new 2018 version of Battlefield 1942. BF5 at launch, it doesn't have that feeling for me. It doesn't feel sometimes like a World War II game. And I know that's such an odd thing to say because this is a video game based on a real war and video games and real war and nothing alike. But I really miss the Americans. I really miss the Russians. I want a PPSH. I want to run around with an M1 Garand and hear it ping when I reload. I want to see Sherman tanks rolling through the fields. I want to get blasted away by a T-34. I want to fly around in a B-52 bomber and have my entire squad on there working together, raining down fire from above. I want a modern frostbite engine, incredible looking experience of Omaha Beach and Stalingrad and Berlin and El Alamein and the Battle of Midway. I want all those things in this game when it launches because it's a World War II game and maybe I've just been conditioned to feel like that because of the entertainment content that I've consumed as I've been growing up and yes at some point in Tides of War, the Americans will come to this game. The Russians will come to this game. You'll get an M1 Garand. You'll get a PPSH. Maybe you'll get to take part in the Battle of Stalingrad or assault Omaha Beach and clear out those bunkers. But that might be a year, a year and a half from now. And I think it was the wrong decision to not include those iconic World War II video game entertainment moments in Battlefield 5 in the launch of the game. I think at some point that call has been made and it's the wrong call and I'm not discrediting the gameplay or anything like that as I've said I think that's fantastic I love the gameplay in this game and I'm going to play this game a ton but not having that kind of World War 2 in the game at launch I think is a big reason why a lot of people aren't quite sure about this game yes it's a feeling yes it's subjective but I can't help but feeling that you know how you've got FIFA and then you've got PES and PES kind of feels like the knockoff version of 
football, and FIFA's the official version. This sometimes can feel like the knockoff version of World War II. Now imagine this game had another year's worth of development. They could have had all these unseen and untold moments, but also that classic World War II stuff. And I don't think doing the Tides of War in the chronological order is necessarily a good thing because people want the Pacific in the game. It's a World War II game and, you know, maybe we're not going to see that till the end of the game's lifespan. And I think that that's a shame. Does what I've just talked about matter to everyone? No, it doesn't. A lot of people just care about the gameplay, fair enough, but that kind of thing is going to have an effect on people's enjoyment and whether they pick up the game for sure. And I did mention Tides of War there too, and this is another area of concern for me. First off, I think it's absolutely brilliant that DICE and EA have decided to do away with premium, right? No more split in the player base, and I've personally been asking and championing for this in my videos on YouTube since BF3. The majority of the community reacted brilliantly to the fact that this game will not have premium and I think that's a great thing and they're monetizing this game because yes DICE and EA are a business by having cosmetics in the game. As far as I could see I looked through everything there are no pay to win elements in this game whatsoever and you can buy cosmetics to change the way your character looks. By the way they got rid of the prosthetic arm and the weird masks that were in that reveal trailer they're gone. So the fact that there's no premium is great and it means that in theory the player base will be larger for longer as they add more content for free. But something else that DICE and EA have announced is what we're getting in the first three chapters of Tides of War. And this goes up to March or the end of March maybe. We've got three chapters, Overture, Lightning Strikes and Trial by Fire. They haven't announced anything past that point yet. And I think in total they said this was going to go on for two years. And in that period of time, it looks like we're only going to get two new maps for the game. Tank battles in Belgium and the battle for Greece. So within six months, two new maps for the game that you can play in Conquest or Grand Operations. Yeah, we're going to get an extra war story called The Last Tiger and the Practice Range. And we're going to get co-op mission and of course Firestorm the Battle Royale, which could be incredible if they pull it off. But that's a, another story, another video. The point I'm making here is that Within six months, we might only have two new maps for the game. And I think with the expectations of gamers nowadays, the biggest game in the world, Fortnite, delivering weekly updates and massive content drops every few weeks. And the fact that the Battlefield audience are used to having four map packs like every three months, they're going to expect like eight maps by the time six months rolls around and we're only going to get two unless anything changes. And I actually played on the first map that we're getting called Panzerstorm, which is the tank battle in Belgium, and it wasn't very good. I'm not allowed to show you any footage of it. It was just a big field with a lot of vehicles. It had assets that were copied and pasted from the other maps. It wasn't an enjoyable map at all. And it feels like it's been rushed to just get it out the door as the first free map in the Ties of War. And the second new location or map is going to be the Battle for Greece. So again, it's not an iconic World War II thing that you probably know about already. So there isn't really going to be that much excitement for it, in my opinion. And when you think about it, when the game launches, we've got eight multiplayer maps, two of which have already been seen and played to death already in the Alpha and the Beta with Narvik and Rotterdam. The other six, I like all of them, apart from maybe Fjell. That's the one that's set up in the snowy mountains, and I think it's just way too linear, and it started to get a bit too explosive spammy. And then we've got the single player, which is a 10 minute prologue and three war stories, which in my opinion, just aren't very good at all. I've already put out a video showing my impressions and gameplay of the single player. It's just not good enough. The AI isn't good enough. It feels like a 10 year old single player game. The scripting, the level design, it just doesn't do it for me at all. And I think really that comes down to the fact that the devs don't have enough time to make something interesting and compelling here. They've got to put together a single player campaign, a group of stories in less than two years. And really that's not enough time for a AAA game like this. So I hope that whatever DICE and EA do next with Battlefield in terms of single player and multiplayer in general or the Battlefield game, whatever comes next as a whole package, they have more time to think and work on it rather than it just being pushed out the door for the investors. I think that DICE deserve more time and freedom than that. Look what they've built here in less than two years. A beautiful, detailed game that's incredibly fun to play, in my opinion, in multiplayer. I'm watching this footage back now and just thinking to myself, there really is no other game that you can do this in. Battlefield is peerless. It doesn't have any competition. 
There's no other games like this on the market at all. So it's such a shame that they don't have more time to polish this and just cram it full of content. But at launch, there's no doubt that the game is going to be pretty light on content if you ask me. So yeah, maybe in a year, a year and a half's time, BF5 will be the greatest Battlefield game ever made and everyone can agree on that. We'll see, only time will tell. The biggest hurdle that DICE and EA are going to have with this game and getting people to play it is the fact that the marketing has been really bad and the perception of this game is wrong. The perception of this game isn't what the game actually is and that's because of the reveal trailer which was terrible and it wasn't representative of the game at all. They should have just showed some gameplay and talked about the new features but they didn't and we got this weird cinematic Michael Bay trailer that didn't feel like a Battlefield game at all and it didn't appeal to the core Battlefield fans in the slightest and they are your most important customers. So a lot of people won't care what the gameplay is like and the fact that it's more skill based and more team play orientated because they've seen the reveal trailer, they've made their impression, first impressions are everything and they've moved on, they won't even give it a second look that's going to be a big hurdle for the game and I think they've done better recently with their marketing and their trailers have been just more gameplay which ultimately we're gamers like that's what we want to see fake trailers and bull shots yeah they worked 10-15 years ago but <laughs> gamers aren't stupid we can see past that just show us gameplay and talk about the new gameplay features in the future please and you won't run into this problem again moving on before we finish the video I've got some Final Stand gameplay. What is Final Stand? Well, if you play Grand Operations and the third day is a close match, you can go to day four, which is called Final Stand. And this is supposed to be the whole idea of that you've been fighting for four days, you've got limited resources and ammunition, your health is low, you can't respawn, and there's an ever-decreasing player circle, just like Battle Royale, and there's no respawn, so you push together, and whichever team has the last person or the last people standing will win that day. So there is a dead zone kind of thing, and it did feel like there was a bit of pressure here but it was kind of weird you started with low ammo but in the middle were the support and medic stations so you could just run up to them get a load of ammo get a bandage and you were good to go and also you could run into the zone for like 19 seconds without taking any damage so it feels a bit weird this game mode and I'd rather that they made it a bit more hardcore if they're going for that approach where everyone is supposed to be beaten down and tired then Give people way less ammunition. Don't let them go up to a supply station and let them grab ammo. If you want that fantasy, then make that fantasy. This could be a really fun game mode if it was executed correctly. At the moment, it just feels a bit weird. But it is promising. There could be something here. And it was pretty cool to get the first taste of a Battle Royale style mode or game on the Frostbite engine. One of the negative I'd say as well is that I'm not really feeling the gun selection at launch. Yeah, I've mentioned the lack of a few iconic World War II guns, but a lot of the guns in here are from BF1. Now, yes, I know a lot of the weaponry used in World War I was also used in World War II, but I can't help but feel like they could have picked some alternatives here than using a lot of the ones that we had in BF1. They're completely different in how they handle because the gunplay is completely different and they were all reworked but they look the same and arguably that's the most important thing. So I just kind of wish that they'd have picked some alternatives and there's plenty to choose from here. It's not like there's a shortage of weapons from World War II but there you go that is what it is and because there's a lot of BF1 weapons in here I don't feel as excited about the weapon pool and it feels like there aren't as many guns as there actually are. And I better wrap the video up now because I've gone on for like 25 minutes. I didn't intend to talk this long, but I suppose that's just where the video has gone. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the footage. Me personally, I'm going to be playing the game tomorrow. It's out on Origin Access Premiere tomorrow. And uh, I've got that. I'm going to be playing it and streaming it on YouTube. And I can't wait to get stuck in to all of the skill trees, the weapon specializations, the customizations, all that kind of stuff, because there's a ton of meta there that I haven't really shown you guys in this video because trust me I'd be here all day with that but I hope that this gave you a good look at the rest of the maps in the game and some of the new weapons and some of the interesting things you can do and hopefully this video informed you educated you about the game and whether you'd like to pick it up or not. 
Make your own mind up though, there's gonna be a ton of videos online today and in the next couple of days from other content creators and there'll be people on Twitch and Mixer and Facebook streaming the game. So if you're on the fence, go check it out and then make your own mind up about it. Don't just take my word for it. I know a lot of the stuff in this video was subjective, but it's honestly how I feel. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a like, thank you. It took a lot of time and effort to go to this event, put this all together. A like would be very appreciated and a comment as well. And if you didn't like the video, dislike it, not a problem at all. Subscribe if you want to see more, hit that notification bell. There will be a ton of BF5 content coming up on the channel and I'll see you in the next one.